My name is Maran Nazir. I am a product manager with Dataflow. Uh, and today I'll be talking to you a little bit about the logging stack. So every uh, SRE best practice book will tell you how important it is to have uh, you know, logging and error reporting cap capabilities for your cloud-based applications. Um, and Google Cloud offers an end-to-end -end suite of tools called the Operations Suite. Um, that includes cloud monitoring, which you've just gone over with Jeremy. Uh, we have cloud logging, error reporting, profiler, trace, debugger, and several more. Um, and you know the ones we're going to be focusing on in this session is really around logging and error reporting. And, and this begs the question, well, what do I need to do to enable these for my data flow, my data processing applications? Simple answer is nothing at all. Dataflow offers native integrations with cloud logging and error reporting that makes you know, some of these critical parts of making your data processing application reliable very easy to do. So the way we'll kind of structure this presentation is uh, do a quick walk through just via screenshots and talk about a few of the conceptual uh, takeaways from each of these things, uh, each of these screens, uh, as well as kind of cover some of the best practices that we've seen in the field. Uh, and then we'll we'll jump into a, a, a 10 to 15 minute demo. First, let's talk about data flow logging. You'll find the data flow logging panel at the bottom of your job details page. Um, you'll see in the screenshot here in, in the bottom right of the corner, there's a little uh, arrow that you can click on that expands the, the logging panel. And when you see the logging panel, you'll see three different screens. You'll see, or three different panels. You'll see one for job logs, uh, worker logs, and a diagnostics tab. Just to kind of refresh your memory on what these respective things are, um, job logs are messages that report the status of the job as a whole. Um, again, this will also reflect any kind of errors that are happening on the workers. They'll get propagated to the job. Uh, but also kind of reflects kind of the orchestration of workers and some of the uh, messages that the Dataflow service is propagating to, um, to your job. Um, worker logs are messages that are produced by the worker instances. Again, uh, as we talked about earlier today in, in the architecture section, workers are the uh, basically the instances that are processing all of your do functions uh, and, your, and your actual Beam code. Um, and so any errors that are, or any kind of logs that are printed from them will be uh, propagated through the worker logs tab. And then lastly, a diagnostics tab that will show you the frequency of each error across your jobs. Um, and we'll dive a little bit deeper into that error reporting and how that expands into our overall error reporting integration. So let's take a close look at the logging panel. Um, again, we'll dive a little deeper in this when we go into the actual uh, demo. But uh, you know, you have a, uh, a a logging panel that allows you for some some basic functionality. Um, one, you allow allows you to filter for a minimum severity. So if you're only looking for, let's say, debug warning uh, or or or, or error, slot, uh, error logs, uh, you can simply click on that filter button to kind of quickly kind of rifle through all the kind of things you, you need to look for in your logs. Um, you can also search for specific strings. So if you're interested in a specific type of log, uh, you could quickly do that within the interface uh, provided within the data flow monitoring UI. So you know, why don't we take a look at a few of the common errors and logs that we see that usually point to a symptom of your job uh, falling behind or an issue being in your data flow job. Um, if you have an initialization failure where we aren't able to essentially um, read your jar file, you might see that in a worker jar file misconfiguration log. Um, if you have memory pressure, this is a very common thing we see with customers' pipelines um, from you know pipelines that are undersized and don't have enough machine uh, machine I mean, enough memory to actually process the code. Um, you might see an out of memory. Um, you know, error. Or you might also see, uh, you know, a VM being shut down uh, due to garbage collection thrashing. Uh, you also might see a very common problem uh, in data processing from slow processing. Um, you know, this might mean a lengthy operation in a particular step. Uh, this could mean a hot key that's detected. Uh, but again, these are searchable within the logging UI. Um, if you have uh, a specific record that is too large 
for our data flow backends uh, or our worker to actually process, you might also see um, a key, commit key request um, that exceeds the size limit. Um, and, you know, in which case you might want to maybe shard that data in some in some way or process it in a different way if it's a if, it, if it's an overloaded key. Uh, and then lastly, if you have too much logging, um, you might also see a, a throttling logger worker. We do have a, a limit to logging. Uh, I believe it is about 15,000 logs per 30 seconds, if I if I recall correctly. I, I, again, I, I, you can reference that in the documentation, um, but you might also get a, um, uh, a log message for having too much logging. But the logging panel in the Dataflow UI isn't the extent of what the uh, Dataflow logging UI offers. Uh, it also allows for um, going into the Log Explorers UI. So you'll see a little uh, a little uh, expansion arrow in the logging panel, and that'll take you to the Logging Explorer screen. Um, you know, this is kind of the part of the the cloud logging or uh, the, the operation suite of tools in Google Cloud. Um, and you'll see, you know, a, a lot of important functionality in it. But I'll, I'll highlight a few things in this particular screen. Um, one, you can create custom queries for your logs. So if you want to identify specific, um, you know, logs that are interesting or with a certain severity level from a particular step, um, you can basically kind of build your query in the query, uh, I guess, the query preview uh, tool at the top. Uh, you can also uh, you know, look, see a histogram of, of specific, um, you know, logs, um, which kind of makes it very powerful to see if you're looking for a specific type of uh, log, um, you know, how often it's occurring on your on your data flow processing. Uh, and then lastly, um, you know, again, uh, we have a helpful bar on the left side that, you know, allows you to filter for different types of logs. Um, you'll see a, a, you know, a, a, a list of different types of log names, uh, which we'll talk about um, here, um, you know, we have it. We print out data flow jobs. Do print out a, a different types of logs. Um, as I already mentioned, job message logs are ones that are, uh, you know, our various components of the data flow service are going to be propagating. So, if we are changing the auto scaling configuration, uh, changing the number of workers, or shutting down workers, uh, we'll showing progress on job steps. You'll see that kind of show up in the job messages, uh, you know, filter. Um, you'll also see worker logs, which are produced by data for workers themselves. Uh, you know, they are doing most of the pipeline work, including processing your actual Beam code. So if you see, you know, user exceptions or, um, you know, uh, errors of your, uh, due to your code, you will usually find them in the worker um, filter, uh, worker filter. Um, you'll also see a few uh, logs on worker startup. Um, this is capturing messages that are related to the actual startup process. So you know, if you are, you know, if your job is having problems uh, downloading jars from cloud storage uh, or some of the dependencies that are associated with your job, um, you might see the logs there as a, as a starting point to look at. Um, Shuffler will include messages from workers uh, that consolidate the results of you know parallel pipeline operations. And then lastly, um, Docker and Kubelet are you know some of the messages related to the processes uh, by the data flow service that are occurring on the machine himself. And you also have the ability to write your own custom logs. So you you can, you also should write custom logs for specific events that are interesting to you. Um, in Java, we provide the uh, SLF4J, um, Simple Logging Interface Facade for Java library. Uh, that is provided um, out of the box for, for Beam. We also contain support for a few other libraries that I, I'll ask you to look at the, the documentation for. Um, Python also includes the logging library package. All you need to do is an import statement to kind of um, enable that. So, you know, let's take a quick look at a code example that we'll, we'll, we'll go back in, into our demo. Um, you know, we are similar to Jeremy's demo. Uh, we are looking at a job that is uh, ingesting, you know, meter data, the energy meter data and, and measuring pressure um, from these, from gauges, you know, across multiple factories. Um, and you know, I you know what I want to be able to do is uh, if I see a uh, a gauge that is showing a negative value um, for a pressure, which is probably off, there could be something wrong with the instrumentation or something that wrong with the uh, the way that uh, that was particularly um, you know measured. Um, in which case, you know, we want to be able to log that as a warning 
um, and be able to kind of specify that. So as you can see in this piece of code here, uh, I've created a basically a, um, a specific uh, statement in my code that shows that if a the data value is showing up as less than zero, I'm gonna log a warning statement that shows a negative pressure value uh, and also propagates that specific negative value. Um, when you want to look for custom logs and using that query builder in Logs Explorer, you can use uh, essentially create the resource type, uh, sorry, filter for resource type data flow step uh, and a log name um, that's similar to the, the, the statement right here. Okay, so now we'll move on to data flow error reporting. Uh, if you remember, uh, if you remember, you'll see when we uh, log on to the data flow job details page, you'll see three different tabs. You'll see the job logs, uh, worker logs, and you'll see the diagnostics tab. Uh, the diagnostics tab is helpful to show uh, where errors occurred along the chosen timeline. It'll show a count of all those logs that are um, all those errors that were logged. Um, and in in some scenarios, you'll see um, possible recommendations for your pipelines. So maybe uh, you know a, a quick you know kind of a deep dive on this specific piece. Um, this is a relatively new feature, but we have just launched log-based recommendations um, for logs that show very clear you know uh, calls to action. Um, we will provide you know a uh, kind of a semantic information around uh, what you can do with those specific errors. So what you'll see here in this example is. You know a uh, you know an operation that's going running a little long, um, and you know you'll see that the code is as it, it kind of deciphers that message. Um, you'll also see shutting down the JVM after eight consecutive periods of garbage collection th thrashing. That's normally a a memory pressure issue, um, and so you know when you say that the worker is shut down, um, when you click on that error, you'll actually now get to the error reporting page, which will link to helpful documentation, a knowledge based article on debugging out of memory conditions. So when I click on a specific error, uh, I'll actually get uh, you know shown the, the error reporting interface. So this again is another service provided through our operations suite. Um, you know, some of the salient things that look at in this particular in this particular interface, um, you'll see that you'll see a histogram that's showing the errors across your entire data flow project. Um, you could filter for a specific job, but if you want to, if if you have uh, you know a number of different jobs that are running very similar workloads, it'll help you identify potentially across the entire fleet of pipelines by searching across your project. Um, you can also you know select different time ranges from the last hour to the last six hours, last day, um, as well as uh, examine stack full stack traces for these respective jobs, so you can see where exactly in your code. Uh, your code might be uh, wrong, um, and then you'll see in the and on the left side here, uh, you know, you'll see a link to issue. If your organization has its own uh, issue tracking um, software, like whether it be Jira or some other, uh, you know, some other tool like that, um, you can actually link it to your own issue so that uh, you know when a specific issue is resolved, uh, you can actually track that also in the error reporting interface. So before we dive into the demo, let's quickly take a quick look at some best practices, some of which have already been mentioned here. So, you know, one of the things that causes a lot of our pipe, our, our customers' pipelines to go awry, um, is when you know a, a a corrupted piece of data causes your entire pipeline to go down. Um, so, you know, when a when when data when, when a missed form shape of data shows up um, and causes your processing to basically um, you know, not necessarily understand, you know, how to process that, um, you know, what we recommend uh, for any job, any use case is to write it to a dead letter sync. Um, you know, that means, you know, writing erroneous records to a dead letter queue um, and also using a kind of an exception block that allows you to log an issue and send that raw data as a sad output to, to store that unprocessable data. Um, that allows you to kind of offline analyze, you know, what might be wrong with the shape of the data what kind of um, condition you might want to consider in your writing your actual own code. So this is a little bit of pseudocode, but you know, let's walk through what you know what each of these things are doing. So uh, you know, we have a little a pseudocode example that shows a sample of an example of a pattern. This pattern written in Java. Um, a few things to note here. So in this first, uh, you know, in that first highlight, you'll see that we wrap that process element function um, in a try catch block. So We'll try that process that 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 that, 
that piece of code that processes the element. Um, in the event that it, you know, does not is not able to process that, we are able to basically, uh, you know, make a custom log, um, and then basically output that corrupted data to a, a sync. Inside of the catch block, as I already mentioned, we don't log every error. You'll see the optional logging at the debug level. Um, that might overwhelm the entire pipeline. So instead, we send that erroneous record to a dead letter sync so that we can essentially um, you know, analyze it offline. And then lastly, you know, we use a tuple tag to so that we can you know, write to multiple outputs in the resulting peak collection. Um, this again allows us to write to downstream peak collections that are required for you know, your, to continue your processing, but also to send raw data to persistent pers storage like BigQuery Cloud Storage so that we can expect them offline for the specifically the erroneous records. Um, this is a pattern that helps you continue your data processing without having to kind of um, back up all the processing, um, but also allows you to, again, um, assess you know, if there are erroneous records or if there's you know, a particular condition your code hasn't actually accounted for, uh, you know, how to analyze that. Awesome. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll dive into the demo. So give me one moment to share my, share my screen. So uh, you might already be, uh, you know, uh, familiar with this job, but you'll see the, um, you'll see the, the, this. This is the job that uh, you might have seen in the press presentation on monitoring. Uh, basically, reading from a, an event stream that's collecting uh, factory uh, pressure gauge data, um, and again, quickly identifying, you know, uh, doing some aggregation, some some, some windowing on it, uh, a conversion filtering bad events, and then um, computing an average for the readings from those gauges. Um, so, you know, as I already mentioned, when you first go to the event processing job, um, you'll actually see just this job graph. Uh, and to get to the logging panel, you will basically to, one second, you'll see the bottom here. Um, when you the, the log panel again will show you um, you know job logs, worker logs, uh, and diagnostics. Um, as you can tell, this job is, is relatively healthy, so we're not going to see any, any errors here. Um, but worker logs will show specifically um, you know uh, you know the the logs that are being printed from your specific worker nodes. Uh, and jobs logs, uh, relatively simple, will show you the kind of the logs that are coming from the, at the job level. Um, because there aren't any error messages that are propagating from the worker level, you won't see very many messages uh, at this level right here. Um, you'll see kind of the, the, the bulk of what you're looking for in your worker logs. Um, once again, you'll see that um, if I want to actually click on a specific step, I can actually filter for worker logs for that specific step. So let's say I want to look at the this, tape, this KV conversion. Uh, when I see that, um, I'll see, actually, let me go to the filter bad events. I'll see a number of different messages for um, this specific step. Um, why that's uh, you know a powerful tool is if I want to be able to see, um, you know, if I you know when you see a job that's unhealthy, you might see you know a red, uh, you know, red exclamation mark uh, with a little badge next to one of these steps, in which that that that's basically conveying to you that there might be an error in this specific step. So to quickly identify you know, where the error might be, you can quickly filter for logs from that specific step by clicking on a specific step. Um, once I am done looking at the specific worker logs, um, I could basically clear the selection. Um, and now I am now seeing logs across you know, all of my workers again. Um, I also have the ability to search for um, you know, a minimum severity. So again, you know, by default, you'll see info logs. Um, but you might be just interested in seeing warning logs and above. Um, what you'll see is, again, the, 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 remember the, the custom logging that we implemented for negative pressure values? I'll see that um, I'm seeing all the kind of negative pressure values that have been um, that have been shown that have been printed from the factories as well as the specific factory that um, you know um, propagated that. Why that might be helpful is you know if I know that uh, you know most of my errors are coming from one specific factory, that gives me identifies, you know, where I could potentially, um, you know, seek to basically um, support a, a something for my, for my, uh, I guess my uh, uh, event producers, uh, where there might be some error in the instrumentation or the actual device itself. Um, and then, you know, as, as also, you know, warning is one of the things I can also look for, but I can also, if I look at info right here, 
And if I wanted to filter for logs, I could simply click, if I, if I know what my custom log might be printing, I could type in something like negative and I will find um, all of the, the logs that are associated with that specific um, custom log that I've created. So you know, now that I've all done, done all of that, um, why don't we click on to the logs explorer? So you'll see back to this screen, um, you know, on the right side, a little button that clicks to the logs explorer. And what's nifty about this is when I have done this, I will actually see that um, I have uh, essentially, um, you know, filtered for this specific log and created a query for that specific log. Um, if I go back to the screen right here and just click to the the overall log explorer, um, that allows me to kind of see all my logs um, and design queries around that. So once again, let's say that I want to look at simply just warning logs. Um, I click on this, and I'll see a histogram of numerous occurrences for those warning logs. So I'll see that I see a, a spike around, you know, it looks like 9.56 AM that shows a number of different warning logs. Um, if I wanted to click on this, I can do a, a, take, a click, take a closer look on, you know, where, you know, some of these warnings might be. Um, again, once I can, I, I can see that um, I'll have these negative pressure values that are written just to me. Um, I'll also see, you know, uh, you know, other things that where there's a data leak that's potentially possible. Uh, you know, uh, for whatever whatever I decided to kind of basically implement, uh, I could probably identify um, using this this log explorer tool. So now that I've kind of kind of played around with this log explorer tool, um, you know, how can I actually kind of go one step further with my logs? Um, if you see that, um, uh, you know, when I look at these negative pressure values, um, I could see actions right here. Uh, when I click on this actions tab, I'll see I, I have a couple things I can do here. Um, I could download the logs, uh, or I can create a sync that will basically uh, write these errors to a specific sync. This is similar to you know what we had discussed in our um, uh, in our presentation around you know writing your errors or writing specific logs of interest uh, to a sync that allows you for for, for 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 future analysis. So you know one of the things you could do with this potential you know uh, this analysis is say okay so now that I have all these negative pressure values I can look at which factories are producing the most negative values. Um, that might point to an issue with you know the the, the devices that are measuring the values in a specific factory um, or something else to do with the kind of the the uh, the application itself. Um, I can also create a log based metric. So when I click on this. You'll see that um, I have the ability to create a metric based on this uh, on these on these logs. So you know, for example, if I wanted to count um, the number of you know um, uh, the number of negative pressure values uh, that I'm that I'm reading in my pipeline, um, I could simply create a counter metric that allows me to kind of specify and then you know to specify the name, the description, and what you'll see is in the monitoring UI, you'll see those counters actually showing up. In your job details page, um, you know this allows for a pretty simple way of uh, basically creating a metric that allows you to also then alert on. So in the event that you see you know a, a certain number of errors or warnings, um, you can quickly respond to them. So you can basically rectify any issues in your in your in your producer or in your pipeline itself. So with that, I am. Uh, that is everything that I, I, I had for the, the logging presentation.